All right, today I'm going to talk about Chart.js, which is a data visualization tool that you can use on your website. I'm going to go over how you can implement it using JavaScript arrays and uh, another option for using a PHP MySQL implementation. So um, I, I use this chart. I use Chart.js recently on my pickleballrader.com website to visualize how your ratings change over time. And I was impressed with how easy it was to implement. And I just wanted to share this process in hopes that it might help you or others. All right, so um, what is Chart.js? It is, as I mentioned, a data visualization tool. It's free, it's open source, and it just is used through a JavaScript library. Um, and yeah, and you can implement it using HTML JavaScript, and I'm gonna show you how you can also use PHP MySQL. All right, so let's get in. So if you're going to do this in a pure um, HTML JavaScript implementation, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just need to make this call to the Chart.js library, um, put that up in your header in your HTML file, and then somewhere in the body tag, you would put in somewhere in the body um, part of your HTML page, you would put in this canvas tag, give it an ID that you can reference later, right? And uh, so again, if we're doing this with just JavaScript, you're going to have arrays that's going to that will be your data that you're going to display. Uh, this could be whatever you want. Uh, and again, all this code is actually uh, will be in the description, and you could copy it, customize it however you want. But here's some starter code to get you going, and you'll notice the in the um, below in the script tag, there's two things you have. You have a reference to your um, ID that was the canvas ID uh, that remember it was called player score chart if you look back here player score chart right and so um, that's a reference to it there and we save it to this variable CTX and we just pass that through to the chart object and the key parts of the chart object are the labels and the data and these refer to those JavaScript arrays that I showed you. Uh, you can give it a label. That's whatever you want to call it. And um, you, there's other options like background color, border color, width, things like that. Uh, but otherwise, really, if you, you're copy and pasting this code, these are the only things you really need to be paying attention to to get something to work and display. And just so you kind of see what that looks like, this is um, that um, chart in a, a web browser and the cool thing about it I'll refresh as you can see is there's this nice little animation that happens when you load the page and you get this little hover over that gives you information about each um, bar in the graph so pretty cool so that's that's how easy it is to get this up and running uh, using HTML and JavaScript so um, let me oh one thing I'll mention is you can by default and here I'll show you in here. This is the code for that page I was just showing you. Um, I actually put in this div around that canvas tag that has um, some style, CSS style to it, that controls the size of the chart. So if I get rid of that, though, I'll just kind of show you what happens. So if I, I'll save that, and you'll see then it takes up the chart takes up the whole side of the, the whole size of the page um, which you know might be something you want but most of the time you're going to want it to take up a specific area of the page and so you can control that by having a div around that um, uh, canvas tag and give that div a width and a height to control the size of the chart and as you can see, then that um, resizes the chart to uh, however you, large you want it to be. All right, pretty straightforward, hopefully. So, all right, so let's go, let's now take a look at how this works in PHP MySQL. All the other stuff that I, sh most of the things that I showed you already are in play. You're gonna make that call to the JavaScript library um, just like this. You're gonna have a canvas tag as well, um, but hopefully you already have some kind of, um, MySQL database. This is one of NBA players and their scoring averages and a year associated with it. But we're just going to do the player's name and the scoring average. And it's going to look something like this when we call it in. 
And so, uh, again, sharing all this code with you, and this is how I recommend you, the your workflow should be, is you create a file called chart.php. You can call it whatever you want, but that's what I call it. And again, here's the code. There's the full code. Um, this part of the code here, if you've ever done any work with PHP MySQL, this should be secured in a um, folder, a secure folder that gets called into your file. If you don't know how to do that, I'll link a video that kind of shows how to do that. But otherwise, you're just making a connection to that because that's information that should be kept secret, right? So you're making a connection and then you're going to call your table and get those fields that you want. And so the critical part of this is you're getting the two fields that represent the data that you want to display. And um, this just um, prints out that data to the screen and we'll use that in our second file, which is going to be called chart.html. And so this file, again, full code here, um, and much of the code, as I said, is exactly the same. There's the call to the chart.js file, the canvas tag, but down in um, the script area of this page, there is a fetch call that calls that chart.php page that basically brings all your data into this page. Um, and then the other critical part of this is this mapping that we do to map each of the data fields to these um, JavaScript variables that we then use in the chart object to display um, your data on the chart. All right, and so that's really it. So the, the critical parts that you would have to customize are really just these names of your fields. Uh, otherwise, you can leave this as B, um, or you can um, you can look into some options, which I'll talk about later, and there's other ways to customize it. For instance, you can change the type of chart. You can add, um, and I'll show you how that works um, in the in your code. You notice down in the chart object, the one of the first fields here is a type. So if I change this to line and hit save, that's going to go ahead and um, update my chart to no longer be a bar graph, but now a line graph. Um, I can go ahead and change this to pi, hit save, and now we have a, uh, a pie graph, pie chart. And so uh, it's really that simple to get this to work. Now you notice these multicolors, I'll show that to get that to work, I actually changed the background color to an array of colors. Um, that, that's just, that's up to you. It's like a nice touch. Um, really comes in handy for the pie chart, I think, for your typical bar graph, though I think you're fine just going with uh, one color. Uh, but that's a matter of preference. Um, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to point out. Um, yeah, we talked about that. And uh, so I'll have a link to the chart JS docs. And there you can find all kinds of options. Um, for example, on my pickleballrader.com uh, site, I have this um, line graph here, and it highlights whatever game you're looking at. And I can hit next, and you see how it changes the red dot to um, highlight that game. I can go back and forth. So there's all kinds of things that you can do to this to make it interactive and more dynamic. Um, Anyway, uh, let me know if you have any questions. I hope you found this interesting and um, good luck.